Transcribed. Listen now to Father Knows Best, a friendly half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, starring Robert Young as father. Starting tonight, these broadcasts will be brought to you by Crosley, makers of famous Crosley automatic television sets, Crosley Shelvador refrigerators, Crosley color style radios, Crosley home freezers, electric ranges, and many other pace-setting products for happier living. Now, here's Robert Young. Friends, it's a real pleasure to have as our new sponsor the folks who make these truly fine Crosley products. And all of us in the cast of Father Knows Best are mighty happy to have been chosen to help tell you about them. A scientist of old once said, Give me the ground to stand on and I will move the earth. Apparently, no one took him up on it, but the old codger started something. Today, if you want a mountain move, there's a machine to do it. If you want a lake or a river move, there's a machine to do it. But sad to relate, there seems to be no force known to man powerful enough to move a 15-year-old boy crouched on the floor of the den at 607 Maple Street reading Dick Tracy. Like this. Bud, will you pick up the papers and hang up your jacket, please? In a minute, Mom. Bud. Huh? Bud. What do you want, Mom? Put that paper away and... Mother! Ha- I'm in the den. Just a second, Mom. Mother, I can't get Kathy to do anything. She hasn't wiped a single dish hardly. Oh, dear. She just sits in front of that radio in the kitchen listening to some bird program. 500 canaries. <laughs> well, I'll talk to her. Oh, I'll be glad when your father gets home. How come Dad's so late tonight? I don't know. Something important came up, he said. Now, please, children. Mommy! Mommy, look! We gotta call this number. Call what number, Kathy? This one! And if we're the first hundred that calls, you know what? We get a year's supply of bird seed. <laughs> Free! Oh, creepers. Now, what would we do with a year's supply of bird seed? It's free. But we don't have any birds. Well, we might get one sometime. Back to the dungeon for you. Come on, my little feathered friend. Well, don't pull me. Children. It's free. What could we lose? (laughs) Bud, I've spoken to you for the last time. Yeah, Mom, I'm going. Margaret, I'm home. Thank goodness. Hiya, Dad. Well, Bud, where are you going in such a rush? Going up to do my homework. Oh, well, that's commendable. Margaret, you know that boy's improving. I remember when we used to have to prod him for hours to get him to do anything. Oh, yes, a miraculous change. Why so cynical? Anything wrong? Oh, no, not really. Just been one of those days, I guess. Well, you need to relax. And this is a good evening for it, because I have to have it quiet around here. I've got to write an article for a magazine. You've got to what? (laughs) <laughs> you didn't know your husband was an author, did you? Well, that's what... Mother Kathy still won't... Oh, hello, Father. Hi, Princess. Say, would you run up and bring down your portable? I've got some piping to do tonight. It's over there on the desk. Oh, well, good. Jim, what's this about a magazine article? Well, you see... Mother Kathy's out in the backyard with a flashlight and the salt shaker trying to catch a bird. <laughs> I'll take care of her later. Betty, there's going to be a story about our little family in a national magazine. What do you think of that? Really? Our family? What in life or look? The Cavalier Insurance Journal. (laughs) Oh. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, well, I think it's real nice, Father. And you're going to write this article, Jim? Well, certainly. What's so surprising about that? Oh, I don't know. Just thought they had regular staff writers that did all that. Oh, no. Here, let me read you the teletype from the home office. This is what held me up tonight, waiting for this to come through. Now, listen to this. Anderson, according to latest figures, your office tops all districts for new business written last three months. Quarterly citation will be... Say, Mom. Just a minute, bud. Quarterly citation will be awarded you next week. What do you think of that? Do you get a bonus for it? No, it's, uh, it's an honor. Oh, 
Mom, have you seen my leather jacket? My problems are in it. It's right in the middle of the living room floor. Oh, how do you suppose it got there? I wonder. Then it goes on to say... Well, pick it up, bud. Don't just look through the pockets and leave it there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it goes on to say, because of award, Simpson wants... Who's Simpson? Editor of the Insurance Journal. Oh, Simpson wants article on how a good family helps make a successful insurance man. Simpson arriving Springfield tonight or tomorrow. Congratulations, Kingsley. Not bad, huh? You'd think they'd give you some kind of a bonus or something. Well, Margaret, the whole idea is... But are you reading those comic strips again? I'm going. Good night, Dad. Good night, son. Well, I better get started. Where's some typing paper? Hey, here's some. Let's see now, how does my family help me be a better insurance man? How do you think I ought to start this, Margaret? Well, I don't know, Jim. Let go of me. I can walk myself. You're not done in the kitchen yet. Oh, there's Daddy. Hello, kitten. Don't bother your father now. He's writing about how helpful his family is to him. Daddy, can I call a number and get a year's supply of bird seed? Bird seed? <laughs> Free. Well, I can't think of anything in the world you need more than a few hundred boxes of birdseed. <laughs> Kathy, you mustn't bother your father now. He's trying to work. You run upstairs and get ready for bed. She's not done in the kitchen yet. Well, you finish up for her, Betty. I think that's a safer arrangement for tonight. Margaret, couldn't we have it a little quieter in here? I've got to get this done. Simpson has to have it. He'll be here tonight or tomorrow. I'm sorry, dear. Kathy, you go up and get your pajamas on. Hurry now. Gee whiz, you can't have anything around this house. Well, let's see now. A man's family. How do they help? Hmm. Will I disturb you if I sit in the rocker and mend your socks? No, 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 that's all right. I'll be quiet. An insurance man's family can be helpful, can be vitally helpful in one of several ways. One... Hmm. <laughs> Must be some way they're helpful. You think so? Well, let's see here. Page one. Margaret, do you have to rock? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Sure it's hard getting something like this started. Let's see now. So quiet in here, I can't concentrate. <laughs> You want me to sew a little louder? <laughs> hey, Mom, can I... Go Get your homework done, bud. Well, that's just it. I can't find my problems. I'm, I must have forgot them. I better run over to Joe Phillips and see if he... Now, wait a minute, bud. You know what happens when you and Joe get together. You can call him up and get the problems over the phone. Won't I disturb Dad? Just don't hang on the phone all night. Yes, sir. Does Kathy have her pajamas on? I don't know. Uh, don't whistle. I'm trying to think. Okay, Dad. What are you writing? It's an article telling how much we help your father in his work. Oh. <laughs> Hello, that you, Joe? Bud. No, I'm home. You home? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly he's at home. That's where you called him. Don't shout, Jim. It's well, not good for you. No kidding. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah? No kidding. <laughs> now, there's an intelligent conversation. <laughs> Bud, ask him about the problem. Joe, did you bring home the problems for tomorrow? Traitor. Wait till I get oh, a pencil. I should have stayed I'll at the office. Down. Okay, let's have him. Wait a sec, Joe. Are, are you starting with the first one? What else would he start with? <laughs> Jim, just don't pay any attention to him. Okay, what's next? Daddy! Oh, no. What is it, Kathy? What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> now, please go to bed. Can I call that birdseed number first? Certainly not. Now, Wait, please Joe, get upstairs. Get oh, if gee. It takes three well. men working eight hour shifts, four days to dig a ditch. How do you spell ditch? <laughs> How do you spell ditch? Don't they teach him anything at that school? 
Yeah, I got it now. Is that all? Well, thanks, Joe. See you tomorrow. Just a minute, bud. How do you spell ditch? Don't you know either? <laughs> That's a hard word. Good night, Mom. <sighs> I'll never get this thing done. Haven't got one word so far. Well, what have you been typing, dear? Now is the time for all good... <laughs> now is the gime for all good... <laughs> I can't even type that right. <laughs> well, it's quiet now. Maybe you can concentrate. Yeah. Let's see now. Family gives the businessman a good foundation. A peace of mind. A... I'll get it, it's for me. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute! <laughs> Whoever it's for, just take it and hang up. There'll be no more phone conversations tonight. Hello? Who? Oh, just a minute. It's for you, Father. Uh, tell him I'm out. Get the number. I'll call him tomorrow. Hello? Father's out right now, but he says if you leave your number, he'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh-huh, I have it. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Who was it? Some fellow by the name of Simpson, I think. Oh, well, I... Simpson? That's the editor. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I wrote his number down. It's right by the phone there. You can call him back. Oh, I was hoping he wouldn't get here till tomorrow. Betty, where's that number? Uh, never mind. Here it is. Papers, numbers all over the desk. How do they ever know who calls? Maybe he could help you write the article. Oh, no. He... Hello. Uh, this is Jim Anderson, and I... What? Well, my address is 607 Maple, but I don't see what that has to do with... What? Oh, no. Look, this is all a... Hello? Hello? Great season. What's the matter, dear? We have just won a year's supply of bird In just a moment, we'll be back with the Andersons for the second part of Father Knows Best. Now, here's the star of our show, Robert Young. Good evening. You know, you don't want to miss any of today's wonderful television entertainment. Hilarious comedians like Paul Winchell and Jerry Mahoney, top sports events, the thrill of watching history made before your eyes. And Bob, folks are bound to enjoy all this exciting entertainment more with Crosley Automatic Television. Right, Marvin. Thousands say Crosley is the set that outperforms and outprices all others. Crosley gives you the picture, the power, the styling that are setting the pace in television. Now at the biggest savings you've ever seen. Now you can save as much as $180 on Crosley's deluxe sets alone. But see for yourself. Visit your Crosley dealer. See how Crosley's ultra-powerful chassis automatically brings you the clearest picture in all TV. Bright, rock-steady, virtually free from interference, even in extreme fringe areas. Notice that with just a turn of your hand, Crosley's Unituner automatically tunes in the picture. And when the picture's right, the sound's right, automatically. Yes, and Crosley's brilliant Permaclear picture automatically stays exactly as you brought it to the screen, without constant adjustment of the controls. Compare Crosley Automatic Television with any other make. Once you've seen and priced Crosley, you'll agree for outstanding performance and beauty, there is no finer television at any price. See your Crosley dealer tomorrow. <laughs> for the life of a writer. He sits in his den in his tailored tweeds, in his hand a mellow pipe. He has trophies on the mantle and a faithful dog dozing by the fire. Jim Anderson, writer, doesn't have the tweeds or the pipe or the dog, but he does have a year's supply of birdseed. Also, a little problem with an editor named Simpson. Shh! Hemingway Anderson is creating. Betty is on the telephone, like this. Thank you very much. Goodbye. What did they say? They said Mr. Simpson hasn't returned to the hotel, and they don't know where he went. Well, keep trying. Maybe he just went out for a cigar or something. Oh, I can't, Father. I have to run over to Janie Liggett's. We're going to do each other's hair. Wait a minute. You can't leave. You've got to be in the pictures, all of you. What pictures? The photographs, didn't I tell you? 
Tell us what? I hired a man from Hanson Studios to come out to the house tonight and take some candid shots of us. You know, home life pictures to go along with the article. Oh, Jim, you didn't. Yeah, I thought it would dress up the article real nice. Oh, for heaven's sake, why didn't you tell me? This house is a mess. Now, Margaret, you don't have to start spring house cleaning just because he's going to take a couple of snapshots. We want the place to look natural. Jim. <laughs> the house will be in the pictures, and the pictures will be in that magazine from coast to coast. Oh, Betty, please get out the vacuum cleaner. But, Mother, I've got to do something about my hair. I'm not going to be photographed this way. And I haven't a decent dress to wear. Wear what you've got on. These are supposed to be home life pictures, not a bunch of nightclub scenes. Well, <laughs> Betty, at least Daddy! Get... I thought we'd take some where we're all grouped around the fireplace. Nice big fire going. You know how that fireplace smokes up the house? <laughs> well, we could put it out after the photographer's gone. <laughs> Daddy! What is it, kitten? Has the bird seed come yet? Kathy, get back upstairs and put on that cute little pinafore you got for your birthday. Pinafore? I just put my pajamas on. <laughs> well, put the dress on. You're going to be photographed. Oh, boy! Well, I thought it would be better to have her in her pajamas, sitting on my lap, me reading to her, Betty and Bud at my feet listening, you mending socks in your house dress. In this old thing? Jim, what do you think you're writing? The Grapes of Wrath? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Betty? I told her Mother, to put... does this dress look all right? It's the only thing that's halfway decent. It looks lovely. Now get all the papers picked up, get the ashtrays, Say, and Dad, it... Say, Dad, could you help me with this problem? It's a real... Holy cow, what's going on around here? Bud, you can help Betty. Huh? Take all those old magazines off the coffee table. But, Mom, I gotta do homework. Your father can help you with that. But, Margaret, I've got to write this. I'm only on page two. It won't hurt you to help your son just for a minute. Betty, straighten the cushions on the Davenport and take your gloves off the mantle. Well, here's the problem, Dad. But I just haven't time to... Well, let's see it. Hmm, if it takes three men working... Eight-hour shifts. Raise your feet, Jim. I want to straighten the rug. Four days to dig a ditch 50 feet by six by three. All right. How long would it take four men working six-hour shifts to dig the same ditch? Bud, please hurry. Okay. You got it, Dad? What I can see is why they want to dig the same ditch. <laughs> if it's dug, it's dug. Maybe it caved in. Bud, pick up all that trash on the desk there. Okay. If three men working eight hours... Oh, this is a ridiculous problem. I better have a talk with that teacher. Holy cow. Hmm? <laughs> Where did this come from? Listen to this. Glowing embers in the fireplace, the welcome embraces of his loved ones, the joys of reading and talking together in the evenings, knowing that such things await a man at the end of a hard day's work is that man's greatest incentive toward success. Oh, brother. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, brother? The best equipped insurance man is he who is backed by a solid compatib... Compatible. Compatible family. What the heck does that mean? They combat all the time? <laughs> Wait a minute, how did that get all wrinkled up? Oh, I don't know. Mom told me to pick up all the trash on the desk. Oh, trash, that's page one. <laughs> oh, good heavens, there's the photographer Hurry upstairs, bud, and send Kathy down Betty, you're dressed, you get the door I'll run up and throw on something Tidy up that desk, Jim Oh, sure, sure I'll wax it and I'll enamel it <laughs> Is Bud going to the door? I'll get it Oh, dear I'm ready, Daddy How do I look? Oh, fine, Kathy, very pretty Are our pictures going to be in the newspaper? Well, no, not the newspaper. It's a magazine. Father, where do you want him to put this stuff? Bring it into the den. This is where we're going to take the pictures. No, it's the bird seed. <laughs> oh, no. Bird seed? Oh, boy. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, you handle it, Kathy. Father, what in the world are we going to do with all that seed? I don't know. Have it for breakfast, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'm dressed. Now, what's all this about pictures? Ask your mother. She seems to have taken over that department. It's for his article. You mean that burning embers in the combatible fireplace? <laughs> I'll never get it done. Maybe I can tell him I got sick or something. Oh, boy, oh, boy, such beautiful... 
beautiful bird seed. Now, if only somebody will give us a bird. I think somebody's already given it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Mother. Isn't she pretty? Mm, Mommy! Yeah. Mommy, come look at my beautiful bird seed. I have boxes of it. See it in the hall? Kathy, you can't leave it there. The photographer's here. Margaret, that wasn't the photographer. It was the man with the bird seed. Oh. Oh, well, that's good. We can all relax for a moment. Is your article done yet, dear? Done? It's not even started. I don't know what I'm going to tell Simpson. Now, everybody be quiet now. Let me concentrate. Whoops, there he is. I'll let him in. No, bud, you go comb your hair again. Betty will let him in. Daddy, do you think if we left all the windows open, a bird might fly in? I don't know, but I know one bird that would like to fly out. <laughs> He's right in the living room, Mr. Simpson. Simpson? Oh, my gosh. What am I going to tell him? Oh, uh, Father, this is Mr. Simpson. Oh, oh yes. Uh, how are you, Mr. Simpson? Fine, just fine, thank you. Oh, uh, my wife, Margaret, may I present Mr. Simpson? How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Anderson? And these are my children. That's uh, Betty, Buzz, this is Kathy. Hello, how Mr. Do you Simpson. Do, Mr. Well, well, three, eh? <laughs> yes, sir, I'll bet your daddy thinks he's a very lucky man. How much do you want to bet? <laughs> I want to apologize for dropping in on you folks so unexpectedly, but I couldn't reach you on the phone. Oh, that's all right. And I have to leave again in the morning. Morning? Yes. So I felt that in view of the article, I have... Oh, yes, the article. Well, you see, Mr. Simpson, uh, well, certain unforeseen things came up this evening. Oh, well, I won't take up much of your time. I just wanted to meet your family and take a few notes. That's all I'll need to write this up. Well, as I was saying, I... To write this up? You mean you're going to write it? <laughs> Funny thing, you asking who's going to write it. About a year ago, I wanted to do a story on the district manager in uh, Joplin. Somehow or other, he got the idea that he was supposed to write it himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, Daddy thought he... Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite an embarrassing situation. He knocked himself out writing this thing, sat up all night working on it, and of course, we couldn't use it. It was kind of corny. <laughs> oh, naturally. <laughs> He'd even taken a batch of photographs to go with it. Well, Daddy hired... Kathleen. <laughs> well, I know that you're busy people, so I won't take up much of your time. Now, what we need, Anderson, is an angle for this story. Oh, yes, uh, an angle. The one we usually use is that a family man is better able to understand the problems of his clients and thus plan a better program for them. But that's been overdone. I'd like to get something a, a little different, like... Uh... Like glowing embers and the fire... What? <laughs> what did you say, son? He was just telling what father considers the greatest incentive toward success. Glowing embers in the fireplace, the welcome embrace of his loved ones, the joys of reading together in the evening. Well, here now. At the end of a hard day's work. Wait a minute. Let me jot some of that down. That's just the kind of a thing we need in these articles. Yes, sir. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes, eh, Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> the best equipment for an insurance man is a compatible family. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Let me get that down. <laughs> You know, I've got a boy at home about his age, and he doesn't even know what the word compatible means. <laughs> Let alone how to use it. No kidding. No, he, couldn't, he couldn't even spell it. Ask Bud to spell dick. Kathy. <laughs> yes, sir, I think that's our angle. The inner glow a man derives from his family carries over into his business. And you know... I've never seen a family that could do that better for a man. You all seem to reflect perfect harmony, peace of mind, <laughs> such orderliness. You all look like you've just stepped out of a bandbox. Well, it's... And this house. It's very rare that you can drop in on anyone unexpectedly and find everything neat as a pin. You must be a wonderful housekeeper, Mrs. Anderson. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's going to make a wonderful story, wonderful article. Oh, uh, there's just one thing more. Uh, we ought to cite the value of a family hobby, something you all indulge in. Can you think of anything like that? Well, let's see. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. I know what it is. You must raise quite a number of them. Quite a number of what? 
Birds. <laughs> I saw that supply of bird seed in the hall. Yes, sir, that'll do fine. You know, I'm somewhat of a bird fancier myself. What do you have, principally? Parakeets? Why, They're yeah. nice. I'd love to see your birds. Well... But I've really got to rush. Thanks so very much for the interview. All of you. Oh, think nothing of it. You must come back and see us next time you're in town. Thank you very much. And Anderson, you can feel very proud. You have a wonderful family. You know something, Mr. Simpson? You're right. <laughs> Exciting new beauty, new time and work-saving convenience beyond your fondest dreams. That's what the 1952 Crosley Shelvador Refrigerator offers you. But don't take my say-so. Compare a Crosley Shelvador feature for feature with any other make. On many models, Crosley gives you carefree automatic defrosting. No work for you. Crosley gives you twice the food where you want it. In front, in sight, in reach. Crosley gives you the full-width freezer, huge meat holder, moist cold crispers, and a big new economical refrigerating unit with long trouble-free life and low-cost operation. No wonder the Shelvador is called America's most imitated refrigerator. But above all imitations, the Shelvador stands out as America's most beautiful, most convenient refrigerator. Once you've seen and priced a Crosley Shelvador, you'll never again be satisfied with any other refrigerator. Visit your Crosley dealer tomorrow. It's the following morning in the White Frame House on Maple Street. And as Jim Anderson, family man of magazine fame, settles himself at the breakfast table, Kathy confronts him with a topic which is currently dearest to her heart. Like this. Daddy! Yes, kitten? Daddy, about that bird seed. Well, I have a thought on that. We'll put it outside for the birds who couldn't afford to go south for the winter. <laughs> Back door, Kathy. I can hear. You don't have to tell me. Jim, we can't put all that seed out in the backyard. Maybe we can trade it for something. Well, you better ask Kathy about that. Look! Look, Daddy! Look what the man brought. It's a bird in the cage. And here's a note with it. Let's see it. For Pete's sake, it's from Simpson. He says we can add it to our collection of parakeets. <laughs> oh, dear. Isn't it beautiful? Daddy, when will it start laying eggs? <laughs> I don't know, but it better be soon. Simpson has accepted our invitation. He's coming back next month to see our whole flock. <laughs> Brilliant in color, brilliant in performance. That describes Crosley's exciting new color style radios. Beautiful decorator design cabinets come in a rainbow of gay colors to brighten your radio listening in every room of the house. From table model to luxurious console, from clock radios to portables, these sparkling beauties are matchless performers. Even the smallest is tone engineered for thrilling big set performance with rich full volume. Examine these wonderful Crosley color style radios at your Crosley dealers. You'll want one or more for your home. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson with Roy Barkey's orchestra. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Norma Jean Nilsson, and Earl Ross. So until next week at this same time, good night and good luck from the Crosley Division of the Avco Manufacturing Corporation, one of America's leading manufacturers of refrigerators, television and radio sets, electric ranges, home freezers, and many other products for happier living. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, brings you Mystery Tonight on NBC.